The movie begins with a young man named Gao lying unconscious in a wrecked car at the bottom of a cliff. Zheng, a native village girl, stares at the car from a distance. A few moments later, Gao wakes up and leaves the car, stumbling across a stony terrain. He barely walks a few meters away from the crash site before Zheng approaches and knocks him out with a stone. The scene shifts to eight hours before the ghastly car accident. Gao, who is a gem hunter, is joined by Shana, his dealer, and Kin, his technician as the trio stands on a sidewalk. There, Gao spots two sketchy men in a car closely watching him from down the street and immediately realizes that they're hired thugs. Gao bids Shana and Kin goodnight before entering his car and driving off. As he anticipated, the men also start up their engine and closely tail him. Gao hits the gas and speeds off, prompting a fierce car chase which causes the accident. Back in the present, Gao wakes up and finds himself in a primitive but strange village. Here, women are the dominant gender, as they hunt and provide for their families, while the men do chores and take care of the kids. Fathers are the homekeepers and cook the meals, while the mothers serve as guards and soldiers, protecting their husbands. The village is a secluded area completely cut off from the outside world, as they have no technology or knowledge of any scientific products. Gao also learns that Xing is the queen of the tribe and is astonished to discover this. Initially, Gao disbelieves her and assumes that the villagers are just nerdy cosplayers with great costumes and a perfect setup. He curses at Xing and the rest of the women, which annoys the beautiful tribe leader. Xing is pissed at his attitude and keeps Gao in a wooden cage as punishment. Later, Gao realizes that they are indeed real people and decides to return to the city as soon as possible. However, Yun He, the tribe's astrologer, tells Gao that he can't leave the village without Xing's permission. After a few hours, Gao begs Xing to release him from the cage and take him to his car. Xing, though skeptical, decides to have mercy on him and obliges. The two head back to the crash site as Gao searches his car for useful supplies. Gao finds a metal bat in the trunk and playfully swings it around. Mistakenly, he hits Xing on the head, causing her to pass out on the floor. Gao seizes the golden opportunity to escape and wears a backpack as he runs into the nearby woods. A few minutes later, the car's fuel tank starts leaking, and soon, Xing is surrounded by a ring of blazing flames. The villagers spot the fire and quickly rush to the scene as they pour buckets of water to extinguish the flame. Gao hears the villagers screaming from the woods and feels guilty for leaving Xing behind. He rushes to the scene and pours a bucket of water on himself before entering the fiery ring and carrying Xing out of it. Right as they leave the site, the car explodes and the duo lands in a nearby pond, much to the villagers' relief. In the following scene, Gao is back in the village and finds his phone in his backpack. He plays a song on it, which attracts Xing's attention as she rushes into the room. Xing fears the strange device and tries to smash it, but Gao assures her that it is harmless. He offers her his earphones, and the duo listens to the music together as Xing falls asleep moments later. Gao lays a sleeping Xing in bed, after which he frantically searches the room, hoping to find a map that can lead him back to the city. In the room, Gao ecstatically finds a sapphire gemstone and decides to ask Xing about it when she wakes up. The next morning, Xing tells him that the sapphire was a gift from her dead mother. A greedy Gao offers her several items, such as a bowl of instant noodles, a novel, and even his phone in exchange for the stone. However, Xing refuses to part with the gem, explaining that it is her most prized possession. Gao is disappointed, but resolves to steal the gem instead. Later that day, Xing asks Gao to meet her in an open field at night so they can watch the stars together. Gao accepts the offer as Xing sheepishly smiles and leaves his shed. That night, the duo lay on the grass and stare at the starry sky. Suddenly, Xing pounces on Gao and tries to remove his clothes, much to his surprise. He throws her off and the two get into a heated argument. Gao is shocked to discover that in the village, to watch the stars means to have sex. Hence, why Xing pounced on him. Suddenly, Gao sprints to the village to escape, with Xing in hot pursuit. Xing is angry at Gao and imprisons him when they return to the village. Gao explains to Xing that he didn't know the phrase's hidden meaning and took it at face value. He also states that where he comes from, people express their feelings romantically, like confessing their love when it snows. Xing finally understands Gao, but still has him spend the night in the cell while she returns to her shed. Back in the city, Shana and Kin earnestly search for Gao to no avail. 
prevail. They check the road where his car swerved off the cliff, but are disappointed to find nothing. Ken uses a drone to search the area, but a magnetic field disrupts the aircraft and causes Ken's monitor to go blank. When the duo return home, they meet Lee Ann, a businesswoman with whom Gao signed a contract. The contract mandates Gao to meet with Lee Ann every 15 days, and failure to do so attracts a 60 million fine. So far, it has been 13 days since his disappearance, so Lee Ann has come to find him. Shauna lies that Gao took a trip to the mountains and will be back soon. Li An is unconvinced, but gives the duo 48 hours to find Gao before she takes action. Back in the village, Xing takes Gao to the woods. Xing confesses her love for him and asks him to marry her as she dumps a bucket of chicken blood on him. Apparently, Xing misheard him last night and thought he said blood instead of snow, as both words sound similar in Chinese. Gao is pissed at her and walks away in frustration, but is caught in a trap shortly after. Gao desperately begs Xing to free him from the trap. However, Xing asks him to accept her wedding proposal before she does this, and a defeated Gao ultimately agrees. On their way back, Gao finds one of the blades of Kin's drone lying in the bushes. Seeing this, he registers that his friends are looking for him, and decides to escape from the village as soon as possible. That night, Gao and Xing converse, and decide to get married the next day. Gao asks Xing about the village's terrain, and learns that there's a secret cave in the forest. He figures that the cave is an exit from the village and plots to use it to escape. Gao also learns that the village has a wine reserve and begs Sheng to take him to it. She obliges, and the duo heads to the village's central pantry. Without her knowledge, Gao drops some sleeping pills into the wine barrel as a ploy to knock out all the villagers during their wedding. Later, the couple returns to Gao's room, and Sheng offers him her sapphire stone as an early wedding gift. Gao feels guilty, but collects the gem anyway. The following night, the couple has their wedding ceremony and observes the tribe's unique rites as Xing goes down on one knee and confesses her love for Gao. Gao accepts her to be his wife, after which the villagers sing and play a love song as the newlyweds dance in unison. To end the feast, Gao proposes a toast and urges the villagers to drink their respective bowls of wine. The unsuspecting natives swallow the drugged drink, but Gao tosses his away when no one is watching. A few hours later, the villagers all fall asleep, while Gao packs a bag and leaves the village. He goes through the woods and eventually reaches the cave, which connects to the outside world. Determined, Gao enters the dark cave and begins his journey to the city. The next morning, he finally reaches the end of the cave and races to the top of a mountain smiling as he sees a nearby road. Back at Gao's house, Lian arrives with her men as the 48-hour deadline is almost over. Lian asks Shauna and Kin about Gao's whereabouts, but the duo reveals that they have no idea where he is. Hearing this, Lian offers Shauna a contract that would transfer ownership of the house to her. Shauna refuses to sign the paperwork, but Lian gives her no choice. The businesswoman signals her men to hold the duo hostage as Shauna is forced to sign the paper with a thumbprint. Fortunately, Unfortunately, Gao barges through the front door right in time to stop them. Kin takes advantage of the distraction and swallows the signed contract while Gao speaks to Lian. Ultimately, the businesswoman leaves the house and promises to keep in touch. When she leaves, Gao freshens up and shares a meal with his friends, who ask where he's been this entire time. Gao wants to protect the villagers from the outside world, so he tactfully avoids their questions and lies to his friends. After their meal, Gao shows them the sapphire gem he got from Shang. The duo marvels at the stone in disbelief, as they haven't seen a sapphire of that size in years. Finally, Gao hands the gem to Shana, alongside a soil sample from the village, for testing. Later that day, the trio visits Gao's uncle, Wen, at a nursing home, and puts on a clown costume to entertain the elderly occupants. That doesn't look entertaining, that looks scary as hell. In the following scene, the villagers wake up and frantically search the area for Gao. Shang is heartbroken by his disappearance, and soon after figures that he escaped along with the gem. Overcome with sadness, she decides to go to the city to search for him. The villager's astrologer, Yun He, initially disproves of her heading to the city. However, when Xing begs her, Yun He takes Xing to the cave's entrance and warns her to be careful of the city people before the queen departs. When Xing arrives at the city, she runs into Yi Tian, a famous astrology social media influencer who is searching for a female co-host. Xing's strange attire and quirky behavior pique his interest, and he offers to sign her to his company. Yi asks 
asks for her manager, but a confused Shing merely hands him a card that Gao left behind in the village. Yi finds a number on it and traces Gao to a nearby nursing home. At Shing's request, Yi drives her to the revealed location to look for Gao. When they arrive at the nursery, Gao spots Shing from a distance and runs before she sees him. He hides behind some bushes and observes Shing as she searches for him. Shing eventually gives up and walks towards the home's exit, but immediately turns around when she hears Gao sneeze from a nearby bush. Gao pops out with his clown costume, but Shing doesn't recognize him and merely watches as he jumps away. Sneezing bushes and clowns, the modern world must seem bananas to Shing. Moments later, Shing joins Yi in the car, and the duo drives away from the home. While conversing, Yi tells an ignorant Shing that clowns aren't real creatures, but are mere humans wearing masks. Shing is astonished by the revelation, and figures that the strange clown she saw at the home was indeed Gao. She begs Yi to return her to the nursery, and the media influencer obliges. Sadly, when they reach the nursery, Gao and his friends are long gone, and Shing is left disappointed once again. Yi volunteers to take Shing to his house, but the tribe leader refuses and sits on a pavement in front of the nursery, declaring that she'll wait for Gao to return. Yi desperately tries to get her to leave, but she refuses and even remains seated under the pouring rain. Meanwhile, Gao feels guilty for hiding from Shing and gets Kin to find her location. A few minutes later, Kin informs him that Shing, together with Yi, is still at the nursing home. Gao thanks Kin for his help and immediately drives back to the nursery. There, Gao spots Shing sitting in the rain with Yi beside her. He pulls up in front of the duo and winds down his window. Shing is shocked to see him and immediately grabs him by his shirt. Gao frantically begs her not to punch him and comes up with an absurd lie, stating that it is wrong to hit people in the rain. Shing is naive, so she believes him and enters his car as he drives her back to his house. Immediately after they arrive, Shing points her crossbow at him, but Gao manages to calm her down and puts the weapon down. Shing asks Gao to return her sapphire. However, the cunning gem hunter distracts her by offering a cake. Shing tries the sugary treat and forgets about the stone, as she viciously munches on it, savoring its foreign taste. When she's done with her meal, Shing spends the rest of the day exploring the house as she adapts to the new environment. She shoots an arrow at the television set, thinking it to be a monster, but Gao explains that it's simply a gadget that can't hurt her. Shing is fascinated by the modern world and celebrates as she swings a punctured feather pillow, making a mess of his house. The following day, Shauna visits Gao and is shocked to find the living room in a mess. Shortly after, Shing approaches her while eating a bowl of instant noodles. Shauna snatches the dish from Shing and demands to know who she is and what her relationship is with Gao. Shing is pissed off by Shauna's attitude and grabs her by the face as the dealer screams in fear. Gao is woken up by the scream and rushes downstairs to find out what happened. He finds Shauna wrapped in a blanket with a cloth over her mouth. Gao quickly frees her and is horrified to learn that Shing is responsible. Shauna is furious and asks him who the strange looking girl was. Immediately, Gao grabs Shauna and takes her to his room upstairs. Then he comes clean and reveals what happened when he went missing. Gao explains that Shing is the queen of a secluded matriarchal village where women rule and men are submissive. Shauna initially disbelieves him, but realizes he's telling the truth when Gao shows her Shing's native crossbow. In the living room, Shing hears a knock on the window and is shocked to find Yi outside the house. She rushes to the door and tries to open it, but can't figure out how. With Yi's direction, Shing finds the door handle, but uses brute force to turn it, thus breaking it. Eventually, she gives up trying to open the door and breaks it entirely. Gao and Shauna hear the sound of the crashing door and rush downstairs to find what happened. Gao is livid to find Yi in his home and drags him out before locking his gate. However, Yi refuses to leave and reveals that he knows Shing is from a secluded island. Gao is shocked to hear this and threatens Yi to stay away from her as he heads back to the house with Shing. The following day, Gao takes Shing to a fashion store to get some new clothes. Shing tries on some outfits while Gao steps out to give her some privacy. Outside, Gao is astonished to see Li An approaching from a distance and is scared to have her discover Shing. Hence, he immediately hides behind a wall and closely watches as the stern woman enters the store. To see what happens next, watch the second part in series recapped.